Okay, time for round number two. Kind of giving up on just making these short, and I'm just going to kind of go with what I feel like. So, yeah, we'll see how long this goes. Uh, but second team. Um, I'm not doing these in any particular order, so please don't think like, oh, this is like the second best team. I'm kind of just going to throw these at the wall. Uh, I've taken some notes. I've gone through, like, the, reviewed the draft, so it took me a little time to get through all of that. Uh, but it's mostly I'm just trying to hit the people who I think really want these videos quick first, so to speak, and then I'm kind of just, like, weaving my way around. So, yeah, second team that we're going to do a review on is Mac and Waffle Rockets. So, what did Mac do? Um, last year was a tough year for Mac. He went triple running back, including Dave Montgomery and Chris Carson. Not, not super fun for him. Uh, did not make the playoffs. So this year, we did, we did some different things. So let's get into it. So, 13th pick, Travis Kelsey, $32. Honestly, if I'm being honest, that's a good price. Uh, Travis Kelsey had 218 fantasy points last year. Um, I want to say that's right around... Actually, yeah, that's that's more than Michael Pittman had last year. Michael Pittman went for 38. So, I'm surprised, actually, Kelsey went for that little. I thought he would go for, May, for 40. Um, I think I'll take a step back this year. Uh, the reason being is just because a lot of teams are going to be keying on him. There's there's no more Tyree Kill. There's no over-the-top threat, unless you believe in Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Uh, I don't. Newsflash. Uh, so, I like him. I think, you know, he's going to get a lot of red zone targets, obviously. So, last year, what, he got 10 touchdowns? He'll probably get, like, 8 touchdowns. A little regression. He'll break 1,000 yards, though. I mean, last year was just an excellent 1,100 yards receiving. I don't think he'll get that much. There's always the possibility he might get hurt as well. He's turning 33, so he is getting older. There is the possibility he hits the cliff and falls. So that's the only rub. But personally, for the price, I like it. 32 bucks to Travis Kelsey. He'll probably get 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns. Yeah. Rock solid number one receiver. Who's your tight end? Okay, not bad start. Went to Joe Mixon. Okay, I mean, Joe Mixon was the number four fantasy running back last year. Uh, the Bengals went to, much to uh, Sarah's joy and my annoyance, they went to the Super Bowl. They did not win, thank the Lord, but that did happen. Mixon had a career high marks in carries, rushing yards, receiving yards, touchdowns. So obviously he had his career high in fantasy points. 267 points. I don't think he's going to be that good this year. I mean as good, mostly because I think the Bengals with their harder schedule will be will have a tougher time. Um but I mean Mixon, Bill Belichick calls, talks about him as the most talented he is the best running back in football is what Bill Belichick says about Joe Mixon. Um, and he's incredibly durable. He's in his prime at 26. He doesn't miss very many games. Very, very good player. Uh, I don't think he'll obviously reach the heights he did last year. Uh, but just based on the amount of... I mean, just based off the fact that even though he's not terribly... He's not like the most efficient runner. But because he's always healthy... You know, like, he's going to get his touches. If Najee Harris is going to go for 61, then, you know, Mixon going for 66 checks out. They're around the same. Both three-down workhorse backs in offenses that are trying to pass more. Um, but I think he'll get 1,100 yards rushing, another 250 receiving, rock-solid number number one running back. So two rock-solid players. Um, yeah, he's probably going to get around the 40-some-odd receptions. He had 42, 42 last year. So, okay, so far, you know, I like the value. We've spent a lot of money, but, you know, very, very solid picks. I like Travis Kelsey. I like Joe Mixon. Um, then we kind of go a little bit 
a little off the rails. We go for Josh Jacobs at 26. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about this pick. When the pick was occurring, I was like, boy, that is a lot for Josh Jacobs. I'm not sure about that. That seems like too much. Uh, but, you know, I like to do research. I like to dig into things. And I will give you this. Uh, in Josh McDaniel offenses, when you have a number one running back, so like Will Garrett Blunt or Damian Harris last year, or, I mean, there was the Deion Lewis year, or the James White year. If the if you get the right back, if you get the right back, more often than not, they become a top 15 running back. So, to your credit, Josh Jacobs is in the Josh McDaniels offense. Um, I think it's going to be a committee, so I don't think he'll be as good as last year. But, I mean, running back's hard. I think he'll get his... 800 yards rushing, I think he'll get 250 yards <sighs> receiving. Uh, he won't get as many touches as he got last year. I think, what, he got like 217. He missed a couple games. Um, but with Kenny and Drake gone, we're talking like Samir White, um, Amir Abdullah. Brandon Bolden's there now. Weird. Whatever. Plays special teams. Maybe gets third down work. I think the worry for Jacobs is you're worried about if McDaniels doesn't use him as a workhorse because really what's been elevating him the last couple of years under John Gruden was he was just always on the field. He touched the ball so much. Now, I mean, even with Kenny and Drake, he was touching the ball a lot. But I think you're going to be in for some touchdown regression upon further review. It's not what I as bad as I thought it was when it was happening in the draft. When I was happening in the draft, I'm like, man, that is, that is a clear overpay on a player that I don't want. Like, that is a lot to give up. But all things considered, you know, we take, like, a well-rounded point of view. It's it's a good – it's a quality price for, for a player. I mean, there were better deals. I mean, Miles Sanders, Antonio Gibson, Cordell Patterson. Um, I think you, you jumped the gun a little bit, especially, like – you know, I'd rather have, like, Elijah Mitchell, who went for, like, two bucks more. Hell, David Montgomery went for six bucks more. I'd rather have David Montgomery. But is it as bad as I thought it was? No, I, I thought it was very bad. It's not as bad. He's just stuck in a committee. He won't get the ball as much, which lowers his upside. But, you know, very safe pick. He'll get his touches. He'll get touchdowns. I don't think he's going to get nine. Again, I think he'll probably get like seven. But, you know, he's he's a number two running back. So, kind of doing the Mac thing where we're taking safe players. So, Travis Kelsey was a good deal, though. Uh, Mixon, you know, right around his average. Probably paid too much for Josh Jacobs, but, you know, he's an, a good a good player. Yeah, I'd rather have A.J. Dillon just for the upside. But, you know, what are we going to do? We took Kyle Pitts at 11, so we're going double tight end. This is where I imagine, Brian, if you're watching this, don't tell me that three tight ends is not a viable strategy. This is why I wanted to do and turn one of the other spots to wide receiver tight end because it's becoming very prevalent to me that teams are trying to use double tight end and there's the possibility that someone gets three very good tight ends. Mac has Kyle Pitts and Travis Kelsey. If he ever made a trade with Patrick for Patrick's second best receiver, that would be Mark Andrews. So... It's not like people are trying to tank. It is a viable strategy, starting three tight ends, especially now because people are desperate. So I don't want to hear any of this shenanigans about that doesn't work. Uh, obviously, people are doing it. So we're well, not doing triple tight end, but they can. And you shouldn't limit, you should never limit people to what they can or cannot do with their own team. Um, give them the freedom to do things. So just want to add that little tidbit because I was just like, really, guys? Just silly. Anyway, Kyle Pitts. I mean, I had Pitts for part of last year. I think, what, Pitts had 1,000 yards receiving, but he only had one touchdown, so we're going to get touchdown regression, but now we have Drake London, but we also had Calvin Ridley for part of last year, at least. But Mar Marcus Mariota's the quarterback? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of ifs with this. 
there's a lot of caveats with this. I wouldn't have paid the $11 for Kyle Pitts if it was me, personally, just because I think there were better values at, like, receiver. Like, freaking, I don't love Tower Lockett. Tower Lockett went for $4. Like, you know, we're paying, like, what is it? Yeah, Hunter Renfro had about a better year than Kyle Pitts did last year. He went for 12. So, I mean, that's kind of, I see Kyle Pitts kind of like I see Hunter Renfro. Is it is it a bad price? I mean, I, I guess not super bad, but do I want to do it? Not really. I, Pitts is really talented. That's not the issue. The issue is he's in a run-heavy offense with a bad offensive line with a quarterback that I don't think is going to get him the ball too, too much. I think he'll have more receptions, so maybe like 75, maybe 80. I don't know if he'll hit 1,000 yards again, but he'll get more touchdowns. They're, with Drake London there, I'm not sure what the workload will be. So he looks like a superstar tight end. I'll give you that. Um, but this is part of the problem with like drafting tight end is because like they get hurt more and they got to be used for blocking. So you never really know how viable they are. I think, what is it? Freaking, let me look at it. Yeah, freaking Darren Waller went for $3. I think Darren Waller on talent is right around Kyle Pitts. I think that's the biggest issue. I don't think Kyle Pitts in comparison to like the receivers at the price he went for is like bad per se. But in comparison to the tight ends, like Mark Andrews I think is worth the twenty two. I think Travis Kelsey's worth the thirty two. I don't know if Kyle Pitts is worth the eleven because he's kind I see him closer to the Dalton Schultz for two dollars, Darren Waller for three dollars, than I see him to the Mark Andrews for twenty two, Travis Kelsey Kelsey for thirty two. That's just, that's, it's a lot for a tight end that I'm now basically forced to start. So, is he good? Yeah. Do I trust the offense? No. Um, Dak Prescott, 57th pick, $2. I like Dak, uh, at least in this offense, because it's super pass heavy. I think he'll be fine. Um, he'll probably be... I mean, what, last year he was the number seven rated quarterback in fantasy. So he's around 10th best quarterback for $2. Can't beat it. I mean, I think would I prefer to get Jalen Hurts for like six? Yeah. Or Kyler Murray for like five? Yeah. But, you know, if you want to save a quarterback, I don't mind it. I think the thing is, I'm not really sure where the upside is, which is really my biggest thing with this draft. Like I compare it to Brian's and there's just like, oh, wow, Jalen Hurts, he's got a lot of potential. And I'm like... Dak had, like, the highest scoring offense last year. What what more can we do? Especially if Mari Cooper is gone and Cedric Wilson is gone and Michael Gallup is hurt. I guess, you know, CeeDee Lamb's good and they're pass heavy and Zeke's another year older, but I'm, I'm not really sure how much more we can do. He almost had 4,500 yards passing. I think he'll get around there. He'll probably get around 30 touchdowns. He'll probably run around 200 yards, and that's around the eighth best fantasy quarterback. Um, so you can't beat it for $2. Um, I think the next pick's really where the upside is, but I'm, I was kind of hoping for some upside. And Dak's just not, there's not a lot of upside here. So I guess the upside's with the next pick, which is J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins has always been a favorite of mine. Um, they are in a run-heavy offense in... Baltimore, obviously, with Lamar Jackson. Um, Dobbins obviously missed last year. Uh, but in 2020, he was leading the league in yards per carry and yards after contact. So yards per carry, six yards per carry. Very high. Uh, yards after contact, two and a half. So also very high. So super duper elite efficiency. But he only had 134 carries that year. Um Gus Edwards is out right now with after his own ACL tear. Um, obviously, I want to see Dobbins be totally healthy. It's the year after coming off the ACL injury. 
and they don't really throw the ball to running backs very much, obviously. But Dobbins was tremendous coming out of Ohio State. This is more of an upside play. So for $23 for J.K. Dobbins, I mean, considering the prices for, like, running back, I mean, God, James Conner went for 48 If you told me... I still don't love Josh Jacobs at 26, but J.K. Dobbins at 23, I like. So I guess you kind of it kind of worked out in the end, um, getting Dobbins like that because Dobbins just, I mean, people forget because last year was nuts for Baltimore with like Latavius Murray and Le'Veon Bell and Devontae Freeman. People forget how good Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins were two years ago, like. J.K. Dobbins could legitimately lead the league in rushing. Uh, he is that talented. Now, obviously, he's coming off the ACL, which is what people are worried about. I don't know if he'll be ready for week one. Um, I need to see him do it, but that's kind of baked into the price. I can't really argue with the price. I think he's got a lot of upside. He's really the player that I think could be like excellent. Um, I think he'll be better than Josh Jacobs. He's, I just do. Um, gosh, what are we? On the high end, Dobbins could be a top five running back. On the low end, with the injuries and everything, he could be nothing, obviously. So I think if we're talking in the middle, he's a top 20 running back, which is 23 bucks. That's a great price. So I like it. I'm going to go more towards the high end because I like him so much. Thousand yards, another 250 uh, receiving, 10 touchdowns. Put on the board. I like him a lot. So then pick 113. Oh, no. Pick eh, pick 78, Elijah Moore, 10 bucks. There you go. So I like Elijah Moore. I uh, like Elijah Moore a lot more than I like Kyle Pitts. So here's a funny, funny go to story time. So story time with Dylan. So I like rookie running backs. Another secret I will give to all of you for something to keep in mind, which is why I like Justin's team so much, is I like second-year wide receivers. Wide receiver breakouts in second year. What does that mean? Well, Justin Jefferson had a very good rookie year. Justin Jefferson was basically the second-best receiver last year in his second year. Usually it's kind of like quarterback, a running back show at their rookie year, quarterback show at their third year, wide receivers are second year. Elijah Moore is going into... His second year. So, was he great to start last year? No. Through seven weeks, he didn't even have 100 yards. Uh, but once he got in the lineup, which he should have been in the lineup sooner, but Jets. Once he got in the lineup, he, I think I want to say in like five weeks, racked up 494 yards receiving and five touchdowns on like 40 catches. So, he was just... Incredible for a five week span of just being, he was like what the number the number three receiver in fantasy for those five weeks, and then he had a quad injury and he was gone. So now Garrett Wilson's there. Where does he fall on the fantasy scale? As I mentioned, I like second year wide receivers, um, but even more so than that, just particularly with. Elijah Moore, we talk about, like, the fraternity of receivers that all work out together. You know, they go to the same college. They went to the same college, yada, yada. So, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, all came out before Elijah Moore. Both of them say that Elijah Moore is better than them. Do I believe that? I have a hard time believing that. I think they're trying to, you know, maybe pump up their brother. But... I can't really argue with A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf, who are just two of the most talented receivers in football, and that's how much they believe in Elijah Moore. I think Elijah Moore is an incredible, incredible talent. Will the Jets use him right, and will he stay healthy? I don't know. Uh, For 10 bucks, I would find out. So, yeah, no, I love this pick. This is pure upside pick. And I wish Mac had more of this. I mean, more is probably like you're probably gunning him as your like if Kelsey is like the number one wide receiver kind of tight end and Pitts you have to play probably at flex. So I guess more is like your number three 
wide receiver for 10 bucks, that's a real good price. I think more, it's a question of will the Jets use him properly. So we'll just bet that he stays healthy. We're just going to make that bet because I can't project injuries. Um, close to 1,000 yards, probably six touchdowns. Um, maybe a little running in there, a little sprinkle. Mm, probably top 30 receiver. But the thing is, he could be more. He could be a number one bona fide receiver. We just don't know. We saw it for five weeks. He was excellent. He was incredible. He ran. He runs routes with such precision, and he reads coverage so well. He was the reason I somewhat believe in Zach Wilson possibly taking the next step this year because Zach Wilson wasn't great last year, but the five weeks he had Elijah Moore... Zach Wilson was an above-average quarterback. So, yeah, it's kind of like Stephon Diggs elevated Josh Allen. Elijah Moore is really, really good. I'm surprised he only went for $10. Uh, what is this, pick 78? Was I out of money around then? Yeah, I was out of money around then, so that's why I didn't bid on him, because I had just spent on Brandon Cooks. <sighs> $10 on Elijah Moore is a steal. Uh, I think he's... If we could go back into the draft, I think he would be worth at least 25 So really, if we're talking like, where did Mac make up the money? I think if we could flip the prices on Josh Jacobs and Elijah Moore, I'd do that all day. $10 Josh Jacobs, $26 Elijah Moore, all day. All day, every day. I believe in Elijah Moore's talent. He is incredibly, incredibly talented. He just He's just got to stay healthy, and the Jets... Gotta use them like they did in those weeks, 8 through 13. They can't just be like, oh, you know, what do we do with this guy? You know, he runs routes and he seems to get open, but we're just going to keep him on the bench for Corey Davis, or we're just going to, like, tell Zach Wilson to give the ball to Michael Carr. Like, no, Elijah Moore's the best Elijah Moore's the best receiver on that team. I don't give a crap about Garrett Wilson. Oh, we drafted Garrett Wilson the first round. Don't care. Elijah Moore's better. He's better. I think... If the Jets can just not be stupid, he will take the next step this year, and he'll be incredible. He's he's a number two receiver, and the fact that he's your third receiver is really, really great. It's a really great find. Um, pick 100 $13, Tony Pollard, good find. Uh, obviously, he's the handcuff to Zeke, um, who's on Eileen's team for $33. Um, I mean, it's going on... Two, two, three years now, I thought Pollard was the better running back in Dallas. I, He's more efficient. He's got more, he's got more acceleration. I mean, maybe they're worried about workload, but honestly, I think if Pollard was the number one, he's a bona fide top ten running back. He's the best handcuff in fantasy. I don't know what Dallas does. The Cowboys make no sense to me. Zeke looks just old and slow and not very good. He's good at pass protection. I'll give Zeke that. But everything else, Pollard is better at everything else. Uh, receiving, rushing. Um, he's better at special teams. Um, I think he'll probably get more yards than last year. I don't really know what to project because it depends on injury, really. But we'll say 750 yards, five touchdowns. Really, he's trade bait because... If he gets hurt, I think Pollard's a top 10 fantasy running back. I mean, maybe even top 5 with how much they give the ball to Zeke, which just boggles my mind because Tony Pollard is better. He's been better. He's more efficient. Um, he just He's faster. I just Zeke looks like he's still running in the beaches of Cabo, and Tony Pollard looks tremendous. I, I wish the Cowboys would give him the ball more. <sighs> All right, so this is where, I guess, things kind of come back to bite you in the butt with, like, the Kyle Pitts $11, because now we're just like, what are we doing at receiver? So we took Michael Gallup. We took Michael Gallup for 3 bucks. I don't mind paying $3 for Michael Gallup, especially with um, Amari Cooper and Cedric Wilson gone, so he's the number two. He's never been a top 20 receiver, though. I think he'll be top 40, mostly because he's – Gonna miss some time. I can't imagine he'll be ready week one. 
or even week two. I am surprised he's not on the pup list, so he'll be back around like at least week four by then. So they're in a pass-heavy offense. I don't mind the stack. You got a lot of Cowboys: Dak Prescott, Tony Pollard, Michael Gallup. Okay, but no, Gallup's a good player. I don't mind it. We'll say 700 yards. We'll say he plays 14 games. So this is three. Um, he's a borderline number four receiver, which is, I guess, what you need because you're starting. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, you took George Pickens, who you've dropped now, uh, funny enough, which I was very pleased about. Very pleased to see George Pickens on the wave of wire. Um, you picked up some Ajay P. Ryan, so, you know, handcuff Joe Mixon, get it. Um, backing up Mixon. He's looked, he's, he's not great. He's solid. He's not going to be overwhelming if Mixon gets hurt. He doesn't have the talent. But, you know, he's a solid player. And if he can just hold off Chris Evans, who I think is more of a passing down specialist, I think P. Ryan's just a good stand-in. So 250 yards, three touchdowns. Um, Mixon gets hurt, you just plug and play. Let's see. We took Jacoby Myers, who you're starting for two bucks at 174. I mean, Myers is the number one receiver in the Patriots, yeah, because he gets the target shares. I think what 23 percent two years ago, 24 percent last year. So reliable. Um, doesn't get very many touchdowns. I think he got three last year. Oh, including his first touchdown ever, even though he got, like, 83 receptions. So he's a reception hog. He's kind of, like, a weird number one in the sense that he's kind of like how Julian Edelman and um, Wes Walker used to get a bunch of receptions. He gets a bunch of receptions, but he just never scores touchdowns. I think it's bad that Devontae Parker's there, because I think Devontae Parker, while he's not great at getting separation, Devontae Parker is a really good jump ball player. So... Myers will get the receptions. He'll probably get around 800 yards, but I think he'll get more touchdowns, but that's not saying a lot because he only got three last year, so we'll go with, like, no, he got two last year, so we'll go with, like, four. He'll double his touchdown total. He's a very underwhelming number four receiver. He's basically a top bench receiver who I don't really want to use because there's not a lot of upside, but he's a starter for you, I guess, right now. Um, we took Josh Palmer at for what for a dollar at one eighty two. So Palmer's like the number three in San Diego. The same way Brian took KJ Osborne in Minnesota, you took uh, Palmer. Um, once he finally beat Jalen Guyton for the number three role, he was pretty good. Um, Chargers are super high scoring offense too. Uh, so we'll say six hundred yards receiving, five touchdowns. Um, if something happened to Keenan Allen or Mike Williams, then Palmer obviously takes a step forward and is a starting receiver. Like Palmer. Uh, Gus Edwards, two bucks, kind of shoring up <laughs> our uh, J.K. Dobbins pick. I mean, J.K. Dobbins for 23 and Gus Edwards for two is not a bad dice roll, also because... J.K. Dobbins was averaging six yards a carry. Gus Edwards was averaging five and a half. Um, I think they'll share the backfield whenever he does come back. It is fully healthy. He's not much. Of, he doesn't catch the ball much either, just like Dobbins. But he's a really good player. It's just a matter of when he gets healthy. We'll say 500 yards, um, and maybe he misses. I mean, he's on, he is on the pup list, so I do, do think he misses more than a month. We'll say he misses like half the season. But I like Gus Edwards. He's super-duper efficient. I drafted him last year, and he tore his ACL. So, yeah, no, I like Ravens running backs because they run the ball so much, and they are they do everything well. Uh, the Ravens are really good at pass protection. They're really good at, I mean, they teach them receiving, even though Edwards doesn't receive. Uh, Dobbins is all right, but he's good. They're, they're really good in open space, um, and that's what I like about them. We dropped, we moved Gus Edwards to IR. Okay, so we moved Gus Edwards to IR. We had dropped George Pickens. All right, we dropped George Pickens, and obviously we picked up Samadji Pirine, and the other one we picked up Kenyon Drake, mostly to handcuff Dobbins and <laughs> Edwards. A lot of Baltimore running backs. Uh, 
funny enough, Drake was the backup to Josh Jacobs, and now he's in Baltimore. I mean, he's a long shot to be fantasy relevant, but if Dobbins misses week one and with Edwards on IR, maybe he'll do something with Mike Davis. Um, he didn't look great last year. I think he only had like 250 yards rushing and 291 receiving. It was mostly the Josh Jacobs show. Um, but, you know, Drake still has the speed. He doesn't have the acceleration, but he has the long speed. I remember when he was at Miami. I'm surprised he didn't go to a better situation. I'm surprised other teams weren't looking for a running back, if I'm being completely honest. Um, overall, I guess we're getting off topic. The people with upside on this team are Elijah Moore and J.K. Dobbins. So, I think the team's solid. I think he had a good draft. I would have liked more upside. I think you really kind of... I really wish that we didn't spend so much money on Josh Jacobs. I really wish that we didn't spend so much money on Kyle Pitts since people undervalue tight end anyway. Um, you probably you could have gotten a relatively around the same price kind of receiver for less than... Eleven dollars, uh, if we're being honest. Yeah, Adam Thielen went for like eight bucks. Like, Hunter Renfro went for twelve. Rashad Bateman went for seventeen. DK Metcalf went for thirteen. Like, there's there were deals. So, I think the team is just uh, there's not as much upside as Brian. I think the team is more solid than good, but I don't. I think this is one of your better drafts per se, just because like you didn't like overreact to anything you didn't try and like you didn't try and stick to your guns of being super safe and conservative with drafting i think it would behoove you to draft more like justin and brian um and take some more chances i love the elijah moore pick you don't have to take again it's about finding what works for you but I think the team is good. It's going to need some work if you're going to get past some of the key players in the league, though. It's a very safe team, which, to be fair, I mean, you didn't make the playoffs last year, so I get it. I think this team is better. Um, yeah, we'll give you, like, a B-. minus. You're, like, right in the middle. There's a lot of good teams. You're in the middle tier of good teams. Um, but, yeah, I just wish we had some more upside play because, I mean... How much better can Dak Prescott be? I don't I don't think he can be much better. How much better can Joe Mixon be? I don't think he can be much better. How much better can Josh Jacobs be? I don't think he can be much better. How much better can J Jacoby Myers be? I don't think he can be much better. How much better can Ka Travis Kelsey be? Even though I like the price, I don't think he can be much better. So it's kind of like, you know, I'd love some upside. I'd love just like, oh, he could be better because he could do X. But really, it's kind of just like all of these guys are coming off like very... I wouldn't say very good seasons, but coming off, like, very high seasons for them. Like, I don't think Josh Jacobs is going to match what he did. Um, even though Patriot offenses usually have, like, a top 20, 20 running back just because McDaniels is going to use a committee and he might not get goal line touches and it might be Samir White, and that's going to suck because even if Jacobs gets most of the work, he doesn't get the goal lines. What do I do with that? So... I guess we're hoping that J.K. Dobbins is the guy, but you're kind of stuck. I didn't, yeah, you're kind of stuck because, like, you have two tight ends, so you have to play one of them at the flex. You can't really pull Jacobs or Mixon at running back. Really, the player you'd want to switch out would be Myers, but you need a second wide receiver. Again, this is why I wanted, you know, a second Wide receiver tight end slot, but who am I? What do I know? So, I like the team. It's not how I would draft the team. Um, it's much safer than I would like to stomach, but it's a good team. So, I think, obviously, you got work to do, but I think everybody's got work to do, really. So, good draft, Mac. Don't, don't beat yourself up too much about it. It was, it was solid. Very solid draft.